Hello guys, in this video we are going to talk about the performance analysis of an algorithm. How do you measure the performance of an algorithm? Now, performance of an algorithm is measured by calculating the space required in the memory by the algorithm or the program that is implemented and the time that it takes for complete execution of the program. So whenever we mean performance analysis, we mean the measurement of space complexity and time complexity. Now let us try to understand what is space complexity. Space complexity is the amount of extra memory required, extra memory required for complete execution of the program. Now whenever you are calculating space complexity, we will not be dealing with the size or the amount of space that is required for the input instance or the input parameters. We are only going to calculate the space that is required for other variables that is there in the algorithm. We are going to see examples for calculating space complexity wherein you will be clear about what is the meaning of extra memory. Now in time complexity, we actually measure the, the running time of an algorithm. How much time does your algorithm take if it is implemented as a program for its complete execution? Now time complexity can be measured using various different tools. We are going to see how to measure time complexity as well. Now modern day computers are fast, but they are not infinitely fast. Similarly, the modern day computers have inexpensive memory. Memory is quite inexpensive, but it is not available for free. Therefore, the space in the memory and the CPU time is not available in abundance. As these resources, space and time is not available in abundance, that is they are limited in nature, we need to make optimal use of them. Therefore, it is very important for us to design or choose an algorithm which will execute in minimum space that it requires and as fast as possible. Therefore, it is very important for us to optimize the space complexity and time complexity of an algorithm. Now, these are the components that contribute to the, to the space complexity of any given algorithm. They are instruction space, data space and environment stack. Now whenever I talk about instruction space, it is the amount of space that is required by the compiled version of the program. What amount of space compiled version of the program takes in the memory? Now instruction space depends upon what kind of compiler you are using because different compiler may yield different size of compiled code and different compilers have different optimization techniques which will determine how much space does your compiled version of your code take in the memory. So this is one, as, one of the aspects or one of the components for determining the instruction space. The next one is data space. Now data space is nothing but the amount of memory that is contributed by all the variables that is there in the in your program or in your algorithm. Now data space, whenever we talk about data space, we know that there are various different inbuilt data types in any programming language like you have int for integers in C, you have float for floating point numbers, right? you have char for characters, you have double and so on. Now in C, int may take either 2 bytes or 4 bytes, so it is let's say it will 2 bytes or 4 bytes float takes maybe 4 bytes character is 1 byte so for each for each data type you'll have the amount of space that it consumes in the computer memory now for example in your in your computer program or in your algorithm if you have uh, if you are using an array a integer array of size 50 now you can determine the size of this particular array if you assume that if the size of integer is 4 bytes the amount of space that is required by a is there are 50 
collection of integers right 15 to 4 that is 200 bytes so this is the amount of space that is consumed by the variable a when it is compiled now talking about environment stack you may be aware whenever there's a function called mid whenever there's a function called mid whenever you call a function now each function call is put inside a stack so this is a stack environment stack each function the instance of each function call is put inside the stack so environment stack is the amount of space that is consumed by each instance of that function call whenever you are making a function call the entry happens into the stack Now, what goes into the stack is the local arguments that is required for that particular instance of a function and you also have something called as the written address because you need to know where to return the control after that function is being executed so each instance suppose instance one instance two instance three of a function it, this goes in the stack one by one once this is executed the controls will go to instance two of that function then once this is done it will go back to control uh, control will go back to instance one of the program this is how recursion actually works now in recursive functions when we are writing a recursive function there is a wide uses of environment stack but also in non recursive functions in some of the compilers environmental stack is used now when we are talking about space complexity in my next video i am going to talk about two different uh, approach for finding the space complexity of an algorithm so we're going to see for recursive algorithm how to derive the space complexity and also for non-recursive algorithm how to derive the space complexity of an algorithm so this is what we are going to see in the next video how to actually calculate the time complexity sorry space complexity for recursive as well as non-recursive and later we will also be calculating the time complexity for recursive as well as non-recursive functions or algorithms the next one is time complexity now there are various different ways for calculating the time complexity of any given algorithm now we are going to see these three different ways of actually estimating the time complexity of any given algorithm now whenever i talk about time complexity it is the amount of time that is required for complete execution of the program and time complexity is a function of input instance we are, we are interested to see how does the time complexity of an algorithm grow if the input size grows or if it shrinks how does the time complexity come down we are going to see this in details in our next videos but in this particular video, I'm going to talk about what are the three different ways that we're going to learn in our next video. Now, experimental measurement is the way for calculating the time complexity by actually writing the program. Now, you have, you have designed an algorithm in the design phase and in the implementation phase, you create the program out of that algorithm. Now, once your program is ready, you can actually execute your program on various different input instances or input size. Like for example, if you, have an, if you have a program which takes an argument as an array, right, and the size of the array is n. So these are the arguments for your, if these are the arguments for your function, now you can run this particular function maybe 10 times or 20 times by changing the value of n, right. If you have, first of all, you can try if the value of n is 10 what is the time time taken you just you have to measure what is the time required if the input size is 10 if the input size is 100 what is the time if the input size is 1000 what's the time if the input size is 10000 what's the time and so on you know for a very large input what is the time that it takes you have to perform an experiment to measure the time we're going to see uh, in in, in uh, later on when i'm talking about this in details in my next videos I'm going to talk how to experimentally measure the time complexity for any given program that we are going to learn this in Python how to do this in Python and also in C in Python and C how to actually perform the time measurement experimentally so this will help us to get an understanding of what is the approximate time complexity for your algorithm 
this is one of the aspect for finding the next one is operation count now for this you have to actually perform the experiment for this you actually actually have to implement your algorithm as a program but for these two you need not implement it as a program these, these are the mathematical ways of actually finding out the time complexity now operation count method as it as it says by itself you have to identify the very much important operation that is there in your algorithm which operation is critical which operation is the most critical operation which is done uh, every time so once you identify the critical operation then you have to find out how many times this operation is being executed the count for this operation and then we estimate the time complexity in our later videos we're going to see how to actually perform the operation count method for finding the time complexity and the last one is step count method step count method now in operation count method we only were we only were focused on one particular instruction or one particular operation or one or two operations which is very much important but in step count method you consider all the operations all the steps that is there in your algorithm and then you find out the contribution of each and every step and then you approximate what is the time complexity in my next few videos i am going to discuss how to find out the space complexity for non-recursive algorithms how to find out the space complexity for recursive algorithm and also how to find out the time complexity using experimental measurement how to find out the time complexity using operation count method and how to find the time complexity using step count method so till then stay tuned